Hey, y'all. Uh, I hope you're having a great week. And I'm excited to share another midweek uh, devotional with you guys. And uh, this week, I wanted to share something uh, just to kind of help you understand our series that we're about to be going into. So in August, we're doing a series called More Rooms. And I'm really excited about this series. I'm really excited about what we're going to dive into. But we're really looking at the heart of giving. The, the heart behind the ways that we give and different ways that we can give out to others. And the reason I really am excited about this whole series is I think it points to something we really, we really need in our time. For us as followers of Christ, we need to be examples of this, of this different way of living. So much of our world seems to be caught up in an endless pursuit of more. You know, we're constantly trying to have economies are always wanting to grow stronger, grow more powerful. And we're all about this growth mindset, adding more rooms, getting more things. And it's slowly devastating our planet. It's slowly hurting us. It's slowly making us divide more and more. And I'm really excited to go into the heart of, you know, the reason behind why we give because I think it can help in this pursuit. And if we can live this out, I think it can bring lots of change to our world. And I want to look at a story this morning uh, found in Second Chronicles. So Second Chronicles uh, chapter 28, and I just want to read with you guys verses 14 to 15. But before I do, I'll give you a little bit of background. So this is kind of a point in Chronicles where you'll read about a lot of the kings. And a lot of the stuff going on, there's kind of this divide between Israel and Judah, and there's different kings, and, you know, Israel will do the right thing with God, and, you know, they'll be thanked for it, we'll focus on their kings, and then Judah is the one who does the right thing by God. And you kind of have all these kings popping up and going down in different wars and different battles, and there's this battle that happens. And afterwards, after Israel has kind of won and done what they needed to do, and they've kind of, you know, taken out some anger and some fr frustration on Judah. Uh, there's a story of one guy killing 120,000 people from Judah in one day. So there's this, this war and lots of stuff going on. And Israel decides to take 200,000 of their relatives, so women, sons, and daughters, with them as spoil. You know, to kind of be their servants and to take everything else that they could kind of find. And you take some goodies after this big victory. And you have them on their way, you know, with the spoils of Samaria and everywhere they've just been. A prophet of the Lord comes to them. The prophet's name is Oded. Probably said that wrong. But he comes out and he kind of tells them, like, look, what are you doing? Stop. Like, this isn't right. You're taking slaves and stuff from from Judah, you're taking out all your anger and your wrath. Like, who are you to take out wrath? What about the anger God might have at the things you've done wrong? And then these certain chief, the story tells us, after hearing this, and it, it names each of these chiefs and each of these leaders, they stand up to the people, trying to bring in these spoils and these slaves. And basically, they're like, yo, stop it. You know, they say it more poetically than that. But in a nutshell, they kind of say, you can't do this. You're bringing more guilt on us. There's already anger from God for the things that we're not getting right, and you're bringing more. This isn't okay. You can't do it. And then we read this, and I want to share this with you. And this is uh, in verses 14 to 15. If you want, I really encourage you, go read uh, Second Chronicles chapter 28 and get the whole flow of the story if you want. But I really want to just point out something that happens in this section because I think it's a really beautiful moment. And it really points to how things can change when we have a different perspective, when we understand the heart of giving. And let's, I'll, I'll read it to you now, so let's dive in. And it will come up on the screen to my side, so you should see it over there, but let's read. So the armed men left the captives and the spoil before the prince and all the assembly. And the men who have been mentioned by name rose and took the captives. And with the spoil, they clothed all who were naked among them. 
They clothed them, gave them sandals, provided them with food and drink, and anointed them. And carrying all the people among them on donkeys, they brought them to their kinsfolk at Jericho, the city of palm trees. Then they returned to Samaria. And I love that beautiful moment that you see of individuals standing up for stuff that's not right, standing up to injustice, and then having a heart of giving. Instead of taking the spoils and just telling, you know, the servants to get out of here, they use the spoils of war to clothe the people who've been taken captive. Then they provide them with food and water and anoint them. And then they help get the ones that are injured on donkeys and the feeble among them, and they journey back to Samaria. They go on their way back to return them back home. And I love this moment. I know there's a lot of stuff in the Old Testament, if we're honest. There's lots of wars and lots of horrible things that happen and lots of really good things. And I think this is one of those beautiful moments. And the heart behind the series More Rooms that we're doing is to to try to create more moments like this. More moments for us as Christians and followers of Christ to stop this endless pursuit of more. To stand up to injustices. To understand the heart of giving and give to others when we can. Give the way God has blessed us to give. And if we're able to do that, I think just like in this story, it creates these beautiful moments. And that's what my heart's for. That's what the heart's for with the series that we're going to be diving into in August. And we're really excited to look at this, to look at the heart of giving. And I really hope you're excited to dive in with us. And I hope from this story today, you can take its example. You can see how to stand up for injustices. How to, if we're in a place to give to others, we should give. If we're able to. And how, when we live this way, it can create these beautiful moments. How beautiful would it be in our world to, you know, let's say we have a, a group of, of Christ followers living in a neighborhood, and there's someone in that neighborhood who goes through a hard time. You know, let's say there's some big family stuff going on. Uh, someone in the family, the main breadwinner, you know, loses their job. They can't pay their rent. They can't put food on the table. What if that neighborhood full of Christ followers decided, hey, we're going to help out, made meals, helped them pay their bills, helped them find a new job. How beautiful would that be to see? What kind of effect would moments like that have in our world? How much would they spread? Where all of humanity starts looking out more for each other. And it's my dream to see a world like that. To try to encourage us as followers of Christ to dive into what God's asking us to do in our here and now to help create a world like that. And I think the first step for all of us is to understand the heart of giving. So I want to encourage you with that this week, church. And anyone else who's watching in YouTube world or, you know, Facebook, whatever this pops up on, I want to encourage you with that. I want you to sit with that story this week, to sit with God and see what God's putting on your own heart, what God points out from this story. And you can you can read it and it's full, you know, the whole chapter, if you want. I just kind of summarize it and just want to share out that little bit because it's a beautiful moment. So let's help cultivate more beautiful moments like the one I shared with you today. May God's grace and peace be with you.
All right. Let's give this a go. Let's see how we do. dance and then you don't dance and no no friend of mine you can dance if you want to you can leave your friends behind but if you don't dance and they don't dance then you are no friend of mine yay such a good dancer right ah. all right god i just pray that you'll be with me this morning i give me the right words to say and help us be a short midweek devotional that points to you in your name amen